everyone, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how and why to hide pinnable images in your blog post, and then how to enter the correct alt text and Pinterest descriptions. So let's hop on over here. I'm going to show you uh, one of my posts. And as you can see, there's a single large image, which is this one here, which is my uh, post title image. There's another one, but it's not Pinterest size or anything like that. So when someone shares from the page, whether with the Pinterest share or with the Tailwind browser extension, this is what will come up. So this one I actually scaled down to about 489 by 749. So it is a little bit longer than these little ones, but still, um, you know, they may pin it because it does have the title on it, but chances are they won't because they prefer um, pinners like longer images they just show up better in the feeds so how do we get that on there all right so let's go over here to my dashboard so when you install the wp tasty and social warfare here's where it'll be the tasty pins will be down here at the bottom and it's one image um, and then the other one is right here this is social warfare and all you would do is add it up in here and enter your Pinterest description that you want to show up. And this is where you can enter those hashtags. Um, so first, let's go down and do the tasty pins really quick. So it's as simple as uploading it. I've already entered it in here. And so as you can see, if you don't have the tasty pins, uh, WP Tasty installed, you will not have this Pinterest text box right here. So your alt text, a lot of people tend to put everything right here, and this will pull, it will pull whatever's in here, and it will come up in the description on your pen. However, that's an issue because, you know, Google can't read those hashtags as far as describing what the pen is about. That is what alt text is for, is to describe the pen. So you don't want to put your hashtags here. And that's why this gives you the extra box. So whatever you put in here is what's going to show up um, on your Pinterest description when it's shared. And so you can add, I'm just going to add some random hashtags. And then hit select and that's it and so I'm going to show you really quick we're going to update this one now when I open this up to the post still there's no pin showing on the page however when I go to share it, there's that additional pen. And this is much more um, Pinterest worthy, has a little more pizzazz to it. And so chances are this is the one that someone would want to save if they wanted to uh, save a link to my blog post. All right, so now we're going to add one more. Close that. And we're going to do this one in the manual way. So I'm going to click. Okay, first we're going to go down to the very, very end of the post, very last thing at the very bottom. And we're going to upload a pen that I made. And again, you will see when this pops up, your boxes are right here. And so again, if you don't have the WP Tasty, um, you wouldn't have this. So we're actually going to enter this as though this Pinterest text box is not here. So I can show you the manual method. So the title is Create Eli. And then here, I'm 
and don't. All right, so we're just going to leave it at that. Okay, so again, we're doing this as though this box is not here. All right, so we're not going to enter this stuff yet. You could enter your web URL right here, but for the purposes of doing the manual, um, well, actually, we'll just go ahead and do that. So this post is this one right here and so this is the URL to the post so we'll just plug that in right there all right and then we're going to insert it all right so now when you look at the page this huge picture is going to be at the very bottom and we don't really want that so how do you hide it so from the here you're going to click over to text and that code that I mentioned, which is the display, uh, display none, copy the entire thing, and you're going to place it just above, so we know this is the uh, image, it's the very last thing, but you can also tell it has the width by height here. So you're going to go just above it and paste in that code. And so now if you click over here, that image is gone. Now, back to the part of the Pinterest description and what shows up. I didn't uh, enter any hashtags in my description. So you can actually look at this and break it apart. So here is the title uh, or the blog URL actually. And then here is the image and information for that. So now, the other piece of code that I gave you starting with data pin description through the div and um, backwards little symbol here so you're going to copy that now the very okay and this is where it'll get a little technical and that's why I say it's so much easier to do it with the um, the plugins so you're going to erase all the way to this backslash, leaving a space between this final um, quotation mark. So don't go right up against it. You need a space there. And this is where you're going to paste the data pin description piece of code. Okay. And so now from here, and it's in red uh, in the text that, uh, in, in the course, Everything between the quotation marks is where you're going to write in exactly what you want to show up when someone pins this in the description. So I'm going to leave it with this text here, but I'm just going to add my hashtags. Uh, leaving a space between them. All right, and then your data pin URL is going to be the website. So I had already pasted it in here, but if you're copying this code and just keeping it, then you'll need to change this from here to here, always within the quotation marks, and replace it with the URL for your the blog post that you're doing this for. And so from there, you'll hit update, And once it's done, so now let's open up the blog post. Again, just the one image is showing. Nothing else is here. Okay. And so now when we click on the Pinterest, 
I have two options. One's a little smaller, and this is your kind of standard Pinterest size, and then one that's longer. So again, you never know what really appeals to your audience. Um, not just the color coordination of, of the pin, um, the theme or how you have it laid out, but also the font and the actual choice of words. What is it that's going to get the attention of the person um, to want to save this pin or to want to click on this pin if it was saved to a board? So that is how you uh, hide your pins. Um, again, you know, you can do it the manual way if you're trying to save money but as you can see you know the html of all of this can get really confusing and all it takes for you to you know leave out one of these little symbols or leave out this space and it messes up the entire code and the picture will not show up properly so it is much easier to use one of the plugins and again either one of them is great um, i like the tasty pen simply because all I got to do is upload the picture and the, it adds the box for me like you saw when we uploaded that last pin. And so you can hide one image, but then any other images on your page, you can add all of that information too because that box is there for you. So I hope this made sense and I hope this helps you. It's really, really important to provide um, good Pinterest worthy images for people to share because if they come to your page and they love what you're showing they're going to want to save it but if you don't have a good image for them you know like i mentioned if all you have are square images i'm not going to save one of those to one of my boards because i only save long pins to my boards and most um, really hardcore pinterest bloggers are the same way so that's all for this um, i hope it made sense and i hope it enables you to start doing that you can go back and do it to all your older blog posts um, and then start doing it from this point forward with any new posts that you write just always create two different versions of a pen for them to um, choose when they do the share button all right so that's all for this one and we will be back with another lesson shortly